Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, November 11, 2018. And this is our weekly video to take a look back and see how some of the things uh, Chinese and Japanese things did on eBay last week, as well as Catawiki. And we'll take a look ahead at what's coming up in the in the following week. A couple of quick things I went. Oh, we're also going to talk a little bit about the uh, results of the Som Genin sale at the end of this. Not in a lot of detail. I just want to go through it. It did unbelievably well, and uh, which was exciting to see because the market's been somewhat lackluster lately. Um, the Hong Kong sales weren't particularly great. I think Sotheby's had a little bit of a hard time in London on their first big sale this week. And uh, there's more sales coming up in late November over in Hong Kong again. And we're working on those catalogs, and we'll, we'll try to um, uh, get them up. A couple of things I wanted to mention was um, we are updating the uh, uh, the uh, eBay Today auction page. Uh, uh, we found a way we can sort of get to it every morning by no later than 9 o'clock here. Usually by 6 or 7 in the morning we can get it to update, and that's been going pretty well. Um, there were a couple of coding issues uh, on what it was pulling in. We cleared that up, so I think that's in good shape. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, Catawiki uh, had, if you've been following on the forum, uh, some folks had commented that they had, uh, uh, and somebody I know in particular had c uh, tried to contact Catawiki to get information on something that was listed, and he hadn't heard back for several days, and he posted, you know, uh, that he would like to, and um, he had a perfectly reasonable question, and, and they never got back to him, so I got, I saw it, and I made a comment, got back a hold of Catawiki, they came over, I sent them a link to the forum, and said, you gotta, you gotta come. Catawiki is, has some growing pains right now, I think, but they're, they're working very hard, and I said, you gotta come over and read the forum, you gotta come over and see what people are saying, you need real feedback, don't live in an echo chamber the way eBay does, good lord. And uh, they did, and they came over, and the guy made, he, he got an account and made a post. Um, nice fellow. He's, he's always communicated with me very freely. He's, he's a, one of the uh, sort of players with the company. And um, I proposed to them that maybe we'll put a, um, something on our page, on the site, a page perhaps, um, with a direct contact link for um, our users. So if they have a question, they can contact the expert directly just by sending a, a message right through our system. And, uh, and then they can include their email address for a return. So they can, they can automatically have that uh, contact information um, right, right there. So I, I think that'll be, be a good idea, okay? And uh, we're going to take a look also and see how the uh, Soam Jennings sale did over in London last this week. Uh, it went through the roof. Uh, I, th I thought it would. I, I mentioned that in the video. I said this is a really interesting collection because it's Soam Jennings, for heaven's sakes. And uh, the, the prices, uh, just in a number of cases, were, you know, blew the estimate, 20 times estimate, 30 times estimate. And there were some other very good results, too. Uh, and we'll take a look at those, okay, just very briefly, all right? And we updated the uh, Catawiki page last week. They, they put out a video, so I threw it in there to get a little bit more information about the company, all right? And then on to uh, eBay. One of the things I wanted to mention was this textile was in, in the newsletter two weeks ago, but when I went to do the video last week, it hadn't closed yet, and I wanted to see how it did, so I hung on to a, a link to it, and I wanted to share it with you afterwards. This was I thought this was a pretty terrific uh, uh, silk with the dragons, and uh, just a, a very nice example, and it had this uh, a beautiful uh, fine work ground in the center. It reminded me sort of of a Middle Eastern software. But it, which is a table thing. But at any rate, it ended up going for $6,100. Did quite well. Um, but that was a, a very nice, very elegant looking uh, 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 textile. Thought it was terrific. All right, and then on to this. This was our friend Tony over in, um, in France. This is the seller Scrap Dixon. Uh, he's an English guy who lives in, in France now and he, he hits all the shops and all the flea markets and he's out there digging around. He's got a good eye. He's very experienced. And he had this up. This was a really nice Meiji period uh, Japanese uh, mixed metal bronze work uh, piece. Nice surface on it. This was really quite a thing. And I hope you took a stop to take a look at it. And, and uh, it looks like it was a stand perhaps for something. Maybe a crystal ball sat on it at one point. But what was interesting about it was the way it was photographed, it didn't look very big. It looks almost like a brooch or a pin. This thing was 11 inches wide. That's why it always pays to look at the dimensions. This thing there is 11.4 inches wide, 29 centimeters. This was a big thing. And uh, it went for $1,095, which I think was a very reasonable purchase. Uh, if you like Japanese metal, Meiji works, I think that was uh, Meiji metal works. I think that was a really, really terrific thing. Really do. Nice. 
All right, and then on to this, the uh, uh, Yixing teapot. This was that little 18th century style. It was a 19th century pot, but it was done like an 18th century one. That sort of compressed form, the rounded handles, the short spout, all that. Very, very reminiscent of 18th century pots, but nicely decorated. The fellow had some good photographs of it in here. It's got a signature on the bottom, okay? The maker's potter's signature, and it ended up going for six hundred and eleven dollars, which is a, a pretty reasonable price. Yixing teapots, um, you know, relative to, to their porcelain brothers, um, sometimes can be uh, much more reasonable, and uh, sometimes they're sort of in the ballpark. All right, but early Yixing is very rare. Um, you know, you don't see much that was made 18th century or earlier. Uh, a few years ago, we had a, we had a really good Ming one that brought the world, but. Uh, um, you, they don't turn up often. That one was in a massive collection of about 700 pots that we sold. All right. So and then we get on to this, this Phoenix uh, Chinese silk textile. Um, the seller had it up as 17th century. It might have been 17th century. It might have been a little later. Uh, the border decoration is very reminiscent of Ming work and these big, big uh, 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 flowers, you know, very typical of Ming, uh, Ming decoration and so forth. But it certainly was an old one. It had some wear to it. This was a really nice, uh, nice early uh, textile, okay? And uh, it ended up going for $670, which I think was a relative bargain. I think it was a pretty good buy. It only had three bids. Um, it wasn't in pristine condition, but it was a good early one. Early textiles in good condition are extraordinarily rare. Once you get before, you know, before uh, 1800 and down, they, they often have a lot of wear, rips, holes, you know, holes you could drive a bus through. But uh, this was a nice one, and I, th I thought it was, it was a, a perfectly reasonable purchase. All right, and then on to this, that Japanese sort of Oribe style uh, uh, pot. This stuff, uh, as many of you know that follow Japanese, is, is so much less expensive than it was 15 to 20 years ago. It's crazy. And this thing, you know, if you're still collecting, this thing was a, a relative bargain. And uh, it went for $74, which I think is great. I love it when great when things that are people collect, really collectible, and you get, a, you get to buy something very good for a, a, a very reasonable price. It's always nice, okay? And this, this came from a seller that gets a lot of estates. And then on to this, the Satsuma uh, pottery vase signed and has, has the uh, detachable, had the detachable stand. I don't know if you stopped to look at it. There's the bottom of it. It's got some sort of old warehousing label on it. All right, but a nice piece. It did have a small uh, something here, a little bit on the, on the upper edge where it was uh, chipped away, nicked away. All right, but it's Satsuma. So if you have a good potter, a good restorer around, you, you can get Satsuma mended up pretty easily because it's not porcelain. It's, it's, it's quite easy to work with. All righty. And uh, it's Friday. Everybody's getting out of work early, it sounds like, around here. Anyway, and then on to this, the uh, Famille Rose teapot. This was a nice old teapot, first half of the 19th century. Uh, very good enamels with, uh, uh, with, with some, some script and so forth. And it did have, a, it was funny because it had a, um, it had a, the, the, the spout, it looks like it had been broken off at one point and has a nick under the front lip of the spout, okay? So I, I wasn't sure how it would do, but I thought it was still quite a nice teapot. The form, I think, was very good, uh, almost like on an English silver form. And um, it did okay. It brought $152, but, but without that break, that's, this is like a six $700 teapot. All right, um, but but if you if you if you're shopping with a modest wallet, this is a good thing. This is a perfectly good pot, and you could get this is the thing is is if if you at some point wanted to get this fixed, that could be very easily invisibly mended, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay, the the work they can do today is fabulous, and that's a nice pot. And this was a decent size. It was a nice size, nice comfortable size. What was it? It was a uh, uh, ten uh, seven inches tall and. 10 inches front to back. So it was a good size pot. It wasn't a little, you know, small teapot like you might be thinking, like, you know, four or five inches. It's good size. Okay. And then on to this, this very nice piece of uh, Japanese wireless cloisonne, uh, quite reminiscent of the work that uh, Namakawa Yatsuyuki did in that sort of flavor. Um, and this was done by a, um, a well known uh, Japanese uh, cloisonne maker, Ando Jubei. And uh, it did fine, but it didn't bring a lot. I mean, look at that, $408 for that, for that really fine, fine piece. And this, again, illustrates how the uh, Japanese cloisonne market has not come back the way you might hope. It's starting to. It looks like it's rimmed with silver. Those look like silver mounts to me. And uh, nicely polished, nicely finished. And uh, what size was this? This was the same uh, fellow that had the teapot. Three, uh, three inches tall. That's about right. 
okay? I remember years ago, we had a Namakawa Yotsuyuki piece on here with a studio plaque on the bottom, and we sold it. I think we got 19000 for it 25 years ago. Um, the, but that shows you how much the prices on these have changed. And Juby's pieces probably back then were worth around two or 3000 So things have changed. At any rate, so but get back to collecting this stuff. It's a bargain. All right, and then on to this, the ivory case. We had an ivory card case that actually got through. Yay! Because usually some jerk reports it and, and eBay pulls it off because, you know, you, 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 you're killing Dumbo, okay? Well, you know, this stuff has no impact on the illicit ivory trade at all. These are old pieces, and uh, people that collect these aren't interested in buying uh um, you know, modern ivory, and here's a better shot of it. The French shot sort of washed out the detail on it. It was hard to tell how nice it was. And if you come over, always check out the photos because there's the detail. This was a gem of a card case, and we've had card cases on here like this before that have brought upwards of a thousand dollars. And I think, unfortunately, I think the seller overexposed it, so the, the, it didn't give a real sense of what the piece looked like. This is the back of it. All right, so always check the photos. If it's the type of thing you're interested in, and it may not look in one photo to be particularly good, always go back and check. All right, and then leave a bid. Always, always leave a bid. Um, because I bet some people saw this and said, oh, I'll circle back for it. And they never do. All right, so somebody got a heck of a buy. It was, yeah, 460 pounds, $603. I think that was under the market. I think it was a good thing. All right, and uh, this, was, this was a seller in, um, uh, what was this? Uh, Cramlington, the United Kingdom. Okay. And then on to these. These were those fun bamboo season plaques, uh, season tubes that I saw. And I, I thought they were quite nice. I thought they were very well carved. And I thought, you know, it would be, they'd be, be a lot of fun to have these. You could hang them in a room. Um, there it is. Beautifully done. They're not horribly old. 1890, 1920, somewhere in there. But just interesting. These would be interesting to hang on a wall because they were big. They were three or four feet long. And the whole set went for $375, okay? They were being sold by a seller in Georgia. So you could probably get these, you know, the shipping to here was only 50 bucks for all of them, all right? Very reasonable, all right? Nice thing, all right? And, uh, and then there was this, uh, this very nice jar. With a st it had a good-looking stand, too, by, by the way, with it. Uh, this was a good stand, and I think that had a lot to do with the price. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't a good jar. It was a perfectly good jar, um, a Kung Shi jar, all right? But, and with that stand, okay, that is a great stand. Uh, the seller should have shown more pictures of it. Here's a better picture of the jar. The, the, the primary shot he used, again, photography, this is the shot he should have used as his primary photo. Because on this, it, it clearly looks Kung Shi. And on this one, your first reflex might be, ah, oh, it's a 19th century done in the Kung Shi style, okay? But it wasn't. There's, there's the shot of it. That's what it really looked like. And it had that superb stand. And it went for $2,650, okay? And I think that was an extremely reasonable buy, all right? I really do. I think the stand was probably worth 1000 or 1500 Just a, a great thing. All right. And a uh, nice package, too. And it was good size. Um, I was um, going back to check the sides, uh, base uh, the side. The jar was 10 inches with the stand, so this thing stood about 12 inches tall. All right, good, good, good presentation size. All right, and then on to this. This there's a, a couple of sellers have had up some nice early Japanese arita lately, and this was one of them. Um, and a very, a very much done like some of the Japanese uh, late Ming pieces that were uh, exported from China into Japan at this time. Um, similar flavor to them, and here you have this nice big use of negative space with just a simple um, uh, area of floral work, and then and then a somewhat developed uh, uh, rim, and it's shaped. And uh, look at that, 11 bids, $195. This is the seller at Asian Art. Okay, they're in um, uh, in Japan. They get they get some pretty nice things. They get some nice things over there. And we feature them fairly often. And here's a page of some of their other things that are up. I, I, they'll be over on the newsletter page. All right. And then here's another piece he had up that sold with the uh, with the herons, one on the ground and one ascending, and the and the uh, willow willow branches coming down. The wisteria branches coming down. Just very nice and rimless. Okay, nice looking thing. And uh, this one uh, uh, is is still open. And uh, it'll close. Uh, when does this close? This closes in a week. This should be in the upcoming sale thing. I messed up. I put it in here by mistake. But this will be in the newsletter. It's a nice thing. It should bring, you know, $300 or so. But 
good looking piece of Arita. If you're an Arita buyer, there's some there's been a number of good early pieces on eBay lately. And there's also been some over on Catawiki. So it's a good time to buy it. I think some collections are starting to get dumped out. All right. And then you have this double gourd lacquer piece, okay? Now, this is one of those later 19th century ones um, that often turn up with um, chin lung marks and so forth, okay? And this had an old, um, old uh, some sort of old shop tag on it. it. Looks like it has some age and wear to it. It is not chin lung. They put chin lung on these. Most of these were done uh, very late in the 19th, early 20th century, okay? But it's done in the manner of those really expensive ones, okay? Um, the ones that turn up at Christie's. At any rate, this one went for $1,259, which I don't think is a bad buy at all. This, this is a good size object. Look great hanging on a wall, very three dimensional, um, and it is uh, nine inches tall. No, it's, uh, excuse me, 16 inches tall, nine inches wide. So this is a nice big piece of lacquer, okay? No problem with that. That's a nice thing. All right, and then on to this. It was that early piece of cloisonne uh, with the exposed uh, rim, and uh, this was also a uh, scrap Dixon had this, and I don't know where he found it, but it's a nice looking thing. Here's the back of it, good grungy surface, you know, the real deal. Somebody had it in the house for a long time. It went for $280, okay? It had a few nicks and bumps on it, but, but nice looking thing, had a real feeling to it, like that, and it was old, you know, a nice early one. And then on to this, this very nice incense burner. Uh, now, this is one of those examples that had been um, um, had been used and, 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 and had been obviously been polished at one point, probably 100 or so years ago. You can see the, uh, uh, on, the on the mask, if you see this, you can actually see the polish residue trapped in there. Uh, it's probably from being in a house in France or someplace or England or the U.S., and they, the housekeeper would polish it periodically, all right? But despite that, and it wasn't big, I mean, you all know how big these teapots is. This thing is a small incense burner, a couple inches, and uh, did very well. It brought $4,900, just took right off. Off it goes, okay? These are rare um, and, and very desirable, all right? And then on over to this one, this is the one, the, the, the bronze that my friend uh, over in the Netherlands had up. Nice arrow vase, good early one. Um, as I mentioned, it looked like it had been mended. The, the, plate, the plates on the bottoms of these bronzes often get knocked out, especially in Western homes because they drop heavy things in them. Sometimes they, they get knocked loose. So, they, so it's not uncommon to see them fixed. But this was a good-looking one. A nice, deep, dark, dark color. Uh, uh, good decoration, archaistic uh, work on it. And a perfectly nice thing. Really was. And it only went for $532. I think that's a very reasonable... Um, uh, price. It had a minor hair, I think a line or something in the foot or something. And it was about eight or nine inches tall, but a very attractive little bronze. Okay. These Ming bronzes are still relatively very good buys, I think. All right. And then onto this, the guglet, um, uh, 18th century, you know, clearly and that sort of thing. You've seen them before. These come in a wide variety of things. I've always thought it would be interesting if somebody built a collection of these because there were so many variants. Basic shape, but then lots of variation in the decoration. Make an interesting collection. There's a picture of the bottom of it, okay? And um, uh, let's see, how did it do? $610, not bad. All right. There is somebody on eBay that has one. I forget who it is. Somebody up there right now has, has one of these shaped pots on there. And they have it dated as, um, you know, like Jai Jing, Ming, Ming, some crazy thing with some huge price on it. It's not. That's one of these, and it's worth about 600 bucks. But anyway. Uh, here is a, the, that very pretty little Datsai uh, saucer dish. It had a hairline in it. And it had some minor issues, but uh, very nicely painted, and it looked okay to me. There's the hairline. It's a Y-shaped hairline. And uh, here's a picture of the back of it. Uh, you know, it had a much earlier Ming mark on it. It wasn't, but still very attractive, okay? And probably Kangxi or, early, you know, Yongshen possibly. And uh, it did quite well. It brought $1,825. This was not a big dish. These dishes tend to run pretty small, probably six or so inches, um, 6.2 inches. That's about right. Um, nice thing. If you see one in 10 inches, you, you, you want to... You, probably pretty safe most of the time to think that they're 19th century but the small ones tend to be older all right and then on to this this nice pair of uh, 18th century blue and white molded vases um, the seller uh, was Kung Shi 0219 he said it's a Kung Shi vase I thought it looked more uh, a little later maybe but uh, he handled it and he's a pretty sharp guy so I will go with his decision on it but a uh, nice looking pair of vases okay one of them had a little issue up around the mouth 
and uh, sold pretty reasonably, $871 for the pair. All right, that was a pretty good buy. They were missing their, their lid or covers or something at one point. They had them, but uh, still, nice-looking pair of aces for under $1,000, well under 1000 delivered. <laughs> All right, and then um, uh, I think this was seller Super Shrink had this. He's a, a very active silver uh, dealer in all areas of silver. Really knows his stuff, if this is who I think it is. Pretty sure it is. Yeah, super shrink. And um, wonderful photography on this arts and crafts type uh, 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 silver. Uh, beautifully done. Nice, nice, nice Chinese export silver. And uh, the set went for $1,525, which I don't think is bad at all. Uh, beautiful workmanship um, and so forth. All right, nice, nice workmanship. You can look at these things uh, extend, you know, for quite a while, and you find lots of interesting things that the, the silversmiths would do when they made them. All right, and then over to here, it's my little watch list I put together. There we go. This was the uh, Catawicky stuff that sold. There was a nice piece of coral on there, and uh, ended up going for nineteen hundred and forty dollars. It was a double double Guan Yin figure. Um, there it is. All right, coming up out of it. And uh, but the, the, these forms with the multiple arms and stuff are sort of desirable. People love them. It's clever how they incorporate the work. And then on to uh, here, this was the, uh, 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 the oh the Chinlung uh, export plate for the Dutch market, the, the, with the armorial crest. The, it's like a wedding plate with the two crests being merged and the the uh, uh, angels trumpeting in and so forth. And uh, it went pretty pretty well. It did three hundred nineteen dollars. The porcelain had some. Um, it looks like it had some issues as far as how it, when it was made in the glaze, and that probably held back on the because the fineness wasn't quite as much as everybody had had hoped for. And uh, let's see here. What's the next one? This one. All right. This was this really nice little cafe au lait, uh, late nineteenth, early uh, late eighteenth, early nineteenth century uh, uh, thing. Done like the Kung Chi ones, but in Famille Rose. Could be mid nineteenth, the uh, mid eighteenth as well. Uh, perfectly nice. But look at this. This thing went very reasonably, hundred and five dollars. Okay, can't beat that. That was a very very uh, 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 good buy. Not not expensive at all. And then there was this, and this was the uh, that Kangxi uh, cup, uh, uh, you know, cup on on base. And in the description, it said that it had some restoration, but it didn't give any detail on the restoration. And I don't think it was probably very extensive. Um, but when the when the sellers are that imprecise, it makes some people hesitate. The, 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 what's interesting is the base on it's original, and it wasn't damaged. It only went for two hundred and twenty-two dollars. And I suspect the buyer of this sent in a note and said, where's the restoration? And how much is the restoration on this? And he probably got an answer and decided to buy it. And I think this may have been a great buy. All right. Um, that's another thing I've asked Katawiki to tell their people. You can't just say area of restoration. you got to say where, when, show a picture of it, put an arrow on it so people really know. All right. And then on to this. This was that nice Kang Shi, uh uh, plate with flowers, this pattern. I've seen a couple of these lately. I'm wondering if a collection didn't get broken up or something. But anyway, this is a nice old Daozai, uh, early Daozai plate. Very appealing, uh, nice use of uh, open space, and then sort of a, a, a sort of a, a real profusion swirling about in the center. I liked it. And it went for $1,164. Okay. And then on to this was that Kendi. This was maybe one of the great buys for Kendi in, in recent memory. Uh, here it is. It looked okay. It's got the typical high edge on the on the tops of Kendi's off and around. You have these little sharp edges. They tend to frit out more. And uh, this one went for uh, 478 bucks. I can't remember the last time I saw a, Ken, a decent Kendi go for under six or seven hundred. All right. And then on to uh, uh, this. Uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention too is that the um, before I get too too close to the end. Uh, and if I didn't mention at the beginning, I might have. I don't remember. But anyway, the Auction Today page, we've managed to get it uh, updated uh, uh, just about every uh, morning by between 6 and 9, sometimes a little before. Okay. All right. And now on to what's coming up. Okay. And on Catawiki, they've got a number of things up this week, some Wan Lee pieces, lots of early plates. But no surprise, they're in the Netherlands. So a lot of the dealers around there and the, collect the houses that they get into uh, have this stuff. There's also some very nice Canton and so forth. So we'll have those in the uh, thing this week. And then there's this nice piece of Kung Shi porcelain, a very familiar shape with this very sort of elegant, almost Middle Eastern minaret uh, 
uh, silver uh, cap that's been ad added on to it. Quite attractive, really is. Um, and um, right now it's up to a whopping two dollars. It's got six days to go. You might want to check it out when we get the page updated. And this was something I thought was really nice. This is quite an unusual uh, Wan Lee plate. If you collect Wan Lee stuff, late Ming stuff, you know, you're used to seeing grasshoppers in the middle of crickets or something like that, or a pair of ducks. This has a hawk in the middle, which I think is just terrific. All right, there's the hairline. It's got a hairline. There's the back. Da, 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 da. Where's the hawk? Come on, show us. There it is. All right. You don't see ones with hawks very often. So if you're a Wan Lee collector, uh, you might want to take a look at this, all right? Because you see other things in the center. Um, uh, I have one at home with a, with, a, with, a, with a leopard in the center, which I think is pretty interesting. But this, is a coo this looks like a very interesting falcon or a hawk, birds of prey, okay? So you would check that out. Okay, and then on to this. Now, I'm including this. This is this is because this is one of those things where the photograph is very deceiving. This looks like a little tabletop thing that's about six inches tall, and it's a nice uh, early 20th, late 19th, early 20th century piece of carving. It is not soapstone. It is not bronze. It is wood, and it's inlaid with silver wire. You, see, you can see the silver wire all through here. It's got the glass eyes, but the carving detail on this is quite good. If you examine the face of the creature of the, of, of the uh of the of the ox and the faces of the boys here they all have individual expressions the metal work here is quite good and okay and this thing is 15 inches tall this is a big piece of wood all right it is most of the you see in this form are little and they're not all that interesting because they're little you know they're six five six inches this is this is 15 inches this is a big big piece It'd be fun to own and it's only up to 100 bucks all right something to look at if you like early carvings i think early wooden old wooden carvings from china are undervalued it's just because i like them it's a personal thing all right and then on to this this is this is a fixed price thing that's over on ebay right now but it's a very nice piece of uh, early japanese amari it's 40 centimeters tall that's a nice 18th century pot uh, early to mid 18th century beautifully done good strong crisp colors and uh, you might want to check that out all right, and that'll be on the newsletter. And then was this, there's a, a couple of things like this coming up. Very attractive little kung shi saucers as always. This is sort of a fun one. It reminds me of the, of the, um, uh, of the uh, 15th century ones. And then you have this. This is uh, another one of these uh, Chan Chi ware pieces. Again, for the Japanese market with the dots and the, uh, uh, here's a picture of the back of it, okay? But I love this kind of decoration. All right, and they did this specifically for the Japanese uh, Japanese porcelain market in there with the uh, Arita stuff. And uh, it's only up to $52. It's got a couple of days to go. But if you collect these nice early pieces, uh, you want to look at this. Frankie over at Egmont Horn has this up. He's got a bunch of stuff up, actually. I think this is also one of his. This attractive little bird on branch. There's two of the, using this palette pattern. All right, and it's got the hole in the bottom, one of these hole in the bottom balls, okay, with all this grunge from uh, the late Ming, okay? And uh, we'll see how this does. He calls it a hung sheep here. Well, it might be, but anyway, I, I like it. I always think of them as being a little later. But uh, beautifully done. And again, up to $61, all right? And then uh, these are on there. These are fixed price. These are a nice looking pair of 18th century uh, uh, compressed bottle vases that have been set up with uh, bronze mounts. The mounts look to date probably from about 1900 to 1920, uh, sort of a cruet set quite attractive and uh, they're fixed price items and they're uh, 750 bucks for the pair I thought that seemed reasonable for those the Ormolu mounts and this was one of the items that we featured on the page because I like the honeycomb pattern in the un sort of the anwa but in you know on hidden decoration in uh, uh, in the rim and then this this very interesting uh, central scene with the parrot overlooking a pond and here's a picture of the back, classic, uh, you know, late Ming stuff. Uh, a nice example, too. A nice molded dish, quite unusual. It's up to $74. This is also um, Egmont Horn. And uh, then on to this. This was a Guan Yin figure that popped up uh, on here the other day. They, I, think, I, think, I forget how they have this thing dated. Qing Dynasty Museum Rare and all that stuff. I think it's, a, it's either very late Qing or early, um, early Republic. But very nice quality in it. It's got two figures. It's got a Kuan Yin standing in front of the Kirin, okay, or the, or the there it is, 
All right, and they incorporated the stone somehow. I'd, I'd kind of like to examine that. That's interesting. But at any rate, it's a nice carving, and I think it's probably a, a slightly, may, maybe slightly out of the Qing period. Um, uh, but at any rate, it's a good carving. Uh, you know, back when, when jadeite was so popular making Guan Yin's uh, between 1900 and 1925. And uh, for some reason with jadeite, nobody, nobody cares. They, they don't even care how old it is half the time. But this was a nice thing, very attractive thing, okay? And then quickly, we're going to hop in here because we're running a little long. This was the uh, fine Chinese ceramics over at Christie's this week. And uh, this will give you some idea how the sale went, and we'll cover it in more detail. This was that uh, one of the first things we did in the video last week was this really, really lovely peony form bowl, 18th century on, on copper. Just a great looking thing. Just a really pretty, pretty, pretty bowl. There it is with lid, okay? And this thing. Uh, was estimated at 10 to 15,000 pounds, and I said at the time, that seems pretty reasonable. And uh, yeah, I guess everybody thought so. It went for 428,000 pounds. So it went for uh, basically 30 times, almost 30 times its high estimate. All right. And that is sort of um, uh, how this sale went in general. Uh, they had an extremely uh, good sale. The flask did sell, which I was glad to see. Uh, the moon flask did sell, but it wasn't the top lot of the sale. Uh, it was a bronze that went way over its estimate, and we'll get into that. But uh, here are the sales, and you'll notice that uh, nearly everything is sold, most of it sold. That really, really attractive uh, um, early Ming, Jeanne de Marc, uh, Ming bronze that was, uh, it was so reasonably estimated, 20 to 30,000 pounds, ended up going for uh, 212,000 pounds. Uh, I thought that was a really nice and loved the color on it, and I think that had a lot to do with it. But also the fact that it was Ming, and uh, 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 not not one of the uh, in, in an early Ming, not one of the later examples that had an early mark on it. This was early mark and early period, and that shows you where these things can land. Also, the provenance didn't hurt it any either, coming from Mr. Jennings's collection. Okay, and it had been exhibited and passed along in the family, so it's all good. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, uh, we'll, we'll do the post-auction uh, uh, look uh, probably next week. And um, have a great weekend. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Please subscribe. Come over to use the site. Come over and use the form and post pictures of things and uh, take a look and see what we found that we put on there that's for sale. We've come up with some pretty good things, as many of you know. We're, we, we, keep, we seem to be getting a little better all the time at it. And uh, I'll see you all next week. Okay. Thanks so much, and uh, enjoy the fall weather. We are. Alrighty. Bye-bye.